And I think I sent it late because I was working on it till late. So I think you, maybe you didn't hear it till the morning. Mm. And I was, you know, I knew you were coming back at eleven or whatever. And I was like, oh. like I re- if she likes it, then I'm, this, I'm so excited about where else that takes us. Mm. Yeah. This episode is being supported by Tape It. If you currently use voice notes to record your ideas, you should try Tape It instead. So if I play this, you'll kind of get an idea of the kind of singer-songwriter version of what this might have been. The suspense is killing me. I know. (laughs) Oh, I'll turn off the wobble as well. I'm trying to fly a UFO, don't really do this often Plus I forgot all the controls, me and my sexy problems This is quite John Lewis to me (laughs) My critical brain would be like, we should leave this a bit Yeah, right, Right. that's the point No GPS, no ETA, I don't know what I'm doing And is that the Nashville guitar? Yes that's cool. Mm. <laughs> That's me messing up. Version that I've seen, and I need somewhere to land. I might as well fall. So you can sort of—it's funny now, because now we know that it's a song, mm. and we know that we believe in it. Mm. Now it sound it still sounds like a lovely song. Exactly. But you can sort of understand how because we, we we didn't know yet. I just think I have a real like jarringness to things that are too saccharine, like too sweet. Mm. And if they start to verge into that zone, I'm like, oh, I don't want it. Get it away. Yeah. So Which I, can I, be to my thinking, detriment sometimes. Although, yes, yeah, I can understand that. I'm, I, should I explain that John Lewis, for those who don't know what John Lewis oh, is, oh, sorry, maybe the that was a... store, <laughs> and and at Christmas they often have a, a very saccharine advert for for Christmas, which is lovely, which and, is normally and, quite lovely. Yeah, but I can and normally also makes see, you cry, and you know, I can see how that could be a criticism or, or critique of something and say oh, that's too John Lewis. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's also part of what makes makes good uh, good artists. Were notable artists or classy artists that way because what well, Olivia's very she sometimes it can be an impediment to be so, so very self conscious about those sorts of things. Mm. I do. I, I, we're lucky. We're a good pair because I kind of feel the same. I, <laughs> I we're just we just we got a kind of a gag reflex basically is set at an appropriate level. The the trick is. We, what we both really agree on is we want to write songs that are fundamentally true. We want the lyrics to be artful and poetic and clever and funny and fantastic, but we want them to be true, actually true as well. And we don't want to sort of, we don't want to resort to cliche. And but we also kind of want to make music that isn't hard to understand. Mm. And so sometimes it's a, it's a bit of a fine balance because there's nothing wrong with that version of UFO no. in the hands of someone. It would have been, it's still the same song. This is the strange thing about it. It's the same song. So if people love that song now, which they do. They might love it like they that. They might, but, but that's the thing. I guess that's the reason for why there is such a thing as production or arrangement or why there's, it's worth thinking twice about things. Because in the end, we made a version that that sort of elevates the out of a style so if, I think maybe you can hear the words better because mm-hmm. you're not just thinking oh yeah I see it's like a it's like cute girl strumming a guitar type song we've mm. heard and it's a good one but come on guys instead it's something that's arresting yeah you know? um, and, and even though it's not like we're the first people to ever start Use a rap a a no. but in it, nevertheless the combination of the elements isn't the same as anything that you are used to hearing and I think it makes you and that's what sort of gave us the confidence in it, protected us mm. from feeling too too self conscious about it. I think arresting is a good word. So, in a way, we've got a sense of what happened towards the end of the first day of writing your FO, mm. and you know, you'd evolved this song, you'd kind of given it a structure, put in some elements, but then the two of you went your separate ways to we did rejoin the next day. Um, 
Olivia decided, you know what, I'm not feeling that anymore. <laughs> and and Matt decided, you know what, I think there's more to explore with this. And so stayed up late um, yeah. working and listening. Um, and then the next morning you met up again and presumably you, Matt, then played Olivia what you'd been doing. I think I might have sent it to you. Oh, right. Okay. I feel like yes, I did. That's how normally it happens. Yeah. I would leave. And then Matt would say, let me have a tinker with it. And then when I would be at the hotel, I would get a new version and go, ooh. And yeah. then return excited. with that in mind, yeah. excited, being yeah. like, okay, this is what I think. Yeah. And that's actually quite nerve wracking, especially when, because I I'd really kind of got my hands, you know, it was, it was quite ch radically changed. And I was like, oh, I think it's really good, but what if she hates it? Then you got, what do you do from there? Well, I mean, it would have been a problem. Um, <laughs> but because I, I sort of was so, I'd fallen so hard for it when it was done. And I think I sent it late because I was working on it till late. So I think you, maybe you didn't hear it till the morning. Mm. And I was, you, I knew you were coming back at 11 or whatever. And I was like, oh. Like, I re if she likes it, then this is going to be a great record. That's kind of what I was thinking. Right? Yeah. If, she's, if, she, if she understands why this is, why this could be really great and can get behind it, then. Then I'm, this, I'm so excited about where else that takes us. Mm. Yeah. Um, but lucky for you, I did like it. <laughs> yeah. Well, luckily, luckily for me, <laughs> you did. we're here today, and we're here today. Look yeah. at that. Yeah. Um, so, what should we hear? Should we? Well, I could maybe show you what it was that I yeah. did. Yeah, that would be great. I mean, the main thing, obviously, is is the vocoder. Well, again, I just wanted to make it less standard, mm. and I thought if it could just have no none of those elements that are standard. Then that's a way to avoid it. So if you can't if you can't have the guitar or the piano, but you want it not to be, I think I tried it just the vocal, a little bit of reverb in a kind of a cappella way, because mm. I really like the words and the melody. And it's one of those melodies that doesn't need the harmony to be interesting. But it's like, oh, it'd be kind of nice to have the alien in there some way. And mm. So that sort of led to vocoder. And sometimes using vocoder is something that you do because you can't think of anything else. Um, that's not why we did it. That's not to be clear. That's not why we did it. Yeah. But it, I mean, it it can it can be that. Um, and I don't I don't know whether I went to it because I was like, well, sometimes this helps because it, it makes mm. it it's a bit magical and who knows. So I, don't, I didn't know it was a good idea. I just thought I'll try it out. And then as soon as I started doing it, I was like, ooh, because it meant you could you could use hardly anything else, mm. um, and it would still be a thing. I did. I did. There's two vocoders on it, and the, the first one was the one I did that night, and then the second time was later on when we were tracking at the pool. I added. I got another hardware vocoder and played another layer. But it is there's something about it. It's like a magical thing. It's kind of spooky, and yeah. like just I remember when we were in. Sorry, to interject no, no. before you play it. Suspense. Mm. Um, <laughs> this episode is being supported by Tape It. If you, like so many of our guests, use voice notes to capture your ideas, you are going to love Tape It. It is the iPhone recording app designed specifically for musicians and songwriters. With Tape It, you can record straight from your lock screen, set markers, add notes, and even include photos of settings. Plus, there's cloud sync, you can import your old voice notes, and to stay on top of it all, Tape It has great labeling features like automatic instrument detection. And all of the above is free. If you currently use voice notes, switching to Tape It is a no-brainer. But that's not all. Tape It has the option to upgrade to using two microphones on your iPhone, along with gentler dynamic compression to give a much more natural sound than any of the usual apps. And we have a special offer of a whole month of this high-quality recording for free. Just head to tape.it forward slash tape notes to try it for yourself and see what a difference it makes. When we recorded the second vocoder, I just remember feeling like, whoa, like I'm in this studio, I'm recording my album, I'm hearing my voice, but like with all these layers of harmony, like singing just soloed, like these really like emotional, like personal lyrics, but everybody in the room and I was just like, poof, I just burst into tears. <laughs> oh, that's nice. It's good. It's yeah. moving. Yeah. But that like harks back to the thing about it being true, you know, it should make, it should bring you to tears. I'll be able to, mm. but you play it now. Okay then. <laughs> so this is the two vocal tracks together. I'm trying to fly a UFO, don't really do this often. Plus I forgot all the controls, me and my sexy prop. 
problems if love's the drug and is this just a matter of taking the recorded vocal and applying vocoder to it or uh, how does it work because you can sing through a vocoder. you can do yeah but my favorite thing is to take a vocal mm. and you basically play it through the vocoder or the vocoder plug-in and then you play the play a, a keyboard along with it so you can sort of play the voice play, but the voice on it, the, the piano the phrasing is all being sent from the vocal so it's also exactly locked in with the lead vocal everything every breath and every phrase so you can kind of hear the ghost of her vocal in it even though it's not there because the phrasing is exactly the same so it just means you can kind of and there's think ways you can play a harmony on the keyboard that you wouldn't necessarily think of if you're recording backing vocals mm. you end up with these kind of lovely accents and then there's two at once and so they kind of rub up against each other yeah, like if this had been a stack of all the exact same harmonies, but with my actual voice recorded, it wouldn't wouldn't have been the same. No, it would have been some take shit, take six horror show. It would have been bad. <laughs> anyway, it's good. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> so we did that. The other thing that I really loved about this, though, as well in the writing, was it didn't have a second verse, it just had another bit. Um, I really love asymmetrical songs. Mm. I think people get very weirdly uptight about that. No reason. If it's good, who cares mm. what shape it is? I remember the, we started, I think we were thinking it might be a chorus or something, the second. Yes. Yeah. And it was like, actually, no, that's just that's just where the song goes it's after. The next, the, bit. the next bit is that bit. But I want, thought it'd be nice to have a scene change in the arrangement then so that was where the piano comes in sort of for the first time so we've had the vocoder and then the little wonky guitar comes in and then the second verse starts and it cuts to the piano but then of course I wanted the piano to be a bit strange so when it comes it's like and it's this it's got this you know vibrato chorus thing on it it's a bit again it's a little bit alien-y because chorus makes things like it's funny how sci-fi is basically dated <laughs> it sounds like the 60s or 70s that's sci-fi but yeah just meant it jumped to that and then jumped out again and then even that that ends up being an arrangement which is quite choppy it's suddenly things are there and then suddenly they're not there we get all those things are counter to the flowy John Lewis mm. the summer dress and trainers vibes mm. um so it's, which is just help. It just helps all those moves. Just helped to frame the lyric in a way that kept me interested, and I hoped would sort of defend the song. Yes. Um, against... No, you did a good job. Thanks. I'll say, I'll give you that, Matt. <laughs> Your job for saving that song. <laughs> Excellent. I mean, it is interesting, isn't it? Because when you listen to it, it's just vocoder then. A tiny bit of guitar. It's and very it, simple. It's very, very simple. Yeah. Less is more. Less is all, almost always more, apart from with Dairy Milk. But um, <laughs> it, in my career of, of doing, doing songs and making them go in the world, I've had so many lovely experiences that prove that things, things don't have to be muscly or kind of armour plated or everything in all the right places in order to have significant life out in the world. In actual fact, most of the things I have made that have gone the furthest or been the most significant to people are spindly buggers and they're made of nothing much mm. apart from some truth. But the bones are good. Yeah, and, 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 some, and some choices and some taste, you know, and it's like... I, I just always thought, I hope this gets on this record. I really hope it's track one, because I think if it gets in the world, no one's going to hear it and go, I would like it if I only had some drums. Mm. They're just going to go, well, I don't think I've ever heard anything like this. I would agree. I would agree. Yeah, if the bones are good, then it's good. I feel like that's been our sort of logic with all of it. Can't put glitter on poo. <laughs> you can. Some great phrases. <laughs> <laughs> 